Hello, I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor, and I'm delighted that you're here. We're going to talk tonight about verbal abuse is more than you think. And for many of us, we think we have an understanding of verbal abuse. We think we know what's going on. However, it's limited to some of the things that are familiar to us, like when somebody puts us down, or somebody degrades us, or somebody makes an offhand nasty comment, or somebody is always suggesting that we're less than we should be, or that we don't do things well, or maybe it goes a little bit further and says things like, um, you should you should be a different way, you're not acceptable the way you are, or maybe even further than that to, well, um, who do you think you are? I mean, you're, you're not valuable. Nobody would want you. You are worthless. Um, you are a poor partner. You're not worth the time of day. And these are things that we begin to understand as verbal abuse. And uh, welcome to all the people who are joining us. That's great. Um, and these are the things that we understand as verbal abuse. However, there are more things than that. There's more things beyond the manipulating that, that sometimes an abuser will do. And I know that it may sound strange to you to think about someone in your life, a parent, a partner, an ex, as an abuser that actually used that term. Because it sounds so harsh, doesn't it? It doesn't sound like someone we would choose to be in relationship with. And yet, we have, or we were born into relationship with that person, and we have to call it as it is. They are abusing us. They are not treating us well. They are not being kind or considerate. They are not uh, being encouraging. In fact, if they can't be nice, at least they could be benign, right? They could be neutral. But no, they need power over somebody and they choose us. And when that happens, we get put down. We get made smaller and smaller. And it's not hard for them to do it because for many of us, we're used to it. Perhaps it happened and it, sh and it shouldn't be happening, but perhaps it happened when you were young. Perhaps you just got used to it and you just know that this is the way it is. People always put you down or people seldom speak kindly to you. So then you get in a relationship with a, a partner and they treat you that way and it almost seems normal, doesn't it? So <clears throat> it's important to know that um, people are asking me questions here and I can't see the questions and see the screen at the same time. So let me just get in here a little closer and see what's going on here. All right, good. So if we become used to it when we were a child, um, it's really hard to recognize when we get older. So it's not just the abuse that we're getting. Hi, Jennifer. It's not just the, the put downs and the slight things that are happening. We need to know all the different faces of abuse. So if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor. And I, I help people who are in relationship with what I call relentlessly difficult people. And so relentlessly difficult people do fall in the category of abusive and abusers. And like I said earlier, it's, it's, it's a bit hard to think about the person that you've chosen to spend your life with as an abuser. It may be difficult to label your mother or father in that way as well. Maybe they were an abuser. And it's more subtle than we think. Often we think sexual abuse. We think physical abuse. We understand that. But we're a little bit vague on verbal abuse and emotional abuse. And we want to get that cleared up tonight. So I want to take it tonight beyond the idea of belittling or language that makes us small or language that uh, allows the other person to have power over us. 
I want to take it to a new level that you might not have thought of, and that's why this topic is verbal abuse is more than you think. And why I want to take it there is because this is something that many people don't know. They don't know have words for it, but they're feeling it in their relationships. Without question, you're feeling it. And that is when someone else wants to define your reality for you. When somebody wants to tell you who you are, what you think, what you feel, what you want, what you need. Have you had that experience where someone wants to tell you that? Well, you, you, don't, you don't want that. You've never wanted that. How do they know? This is the first time I've had November the 11th at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Maybe today that is what I want. It's very subtle, this kind of abuse, and that's why we often don't pick it up readily. Because someone starts to tell us what we want, they tell us what we think, they tell us what we should want. They tell us what we should think, or what a good person thinks, or, or what would be appropriate. How dare they? Really, how dare they tell us what we think, what we feel, what we need, or what we want? They're not us. They don't know that. Now, how many times has that kind of abuse happened in your life? I bet now that I'm bringing this into the conscious mind here, you're thinking, yeah, there's been more than two or three times in my life or in my day or in the last hour when somebody has tried to tell me who I am, what I want, what I think, what I feel, what I need, what's right, what's wrong. They want to do life for me. And one of the ways that abusers work is by defining your life for you. And they think you should believe them. They think that, <clears throat> excuse me, if you just go... If you just were had it right, you would listen to them and there would be no problem. They could define your reality for you. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's inappropriate. It's just wrong. It's wrong on every level. And it's subtle and it's sneaky and it gets in under your skin. So have you ever had that happen to you? Are you beginning to see how that could be abusive, but it could be so subtle that it just kind of gets woven into your relationship? So tonight, what I want is to create a wake-up call for you to say, no, that's not all right with me. It's not all right for you to tell me who I am. It's not all right for you to tell me what I think. And of course, you you probably need a good way to do that. So I'm going to suggest that one of the things that you do when, when you become aware that somebody's doing that, the next time that you catch it, you say, oh, that's interesting. You are not me. You couldn't know what I want right now. So I would ha be happy to tell you what I want right now. And then you do it. Now the trick to doing that is to never make it about them. Whatever it is, just say, what I want is uh, peace of mind. I want to figure this out on my own. I want someone to listen to me but not fix the problem. And you can clearly say what you want. But remember, you're going to preface it with, oh, that's interesting. You are not me, so you couldn't know what I want. This morning I had a great conversation uh, for my podcast, which will go up on For Relationship Help at iTunes next week. And it was with Patricia Evans, the woman who wrote uh, The Verbally Abusive Relationship. And she was a pioneer, the absolute forerunner in the field of bringing the notion of verbal abuse into the common language. And we were talking about this very thing. Because I write about hijackals. And I coined that term for people who hijack relationships for their own purposes while relentlessly scavenging them for power, status, and control. So 
she was interested in my work and I am interested in her work and we got to talking about this thing where people don't realize that it's a form of abuse when someone else wants to define your reality for you. And so important to be able to have a way to phrase it so that you're not, you, you never confront a hijackal directly. It will never work for you. It is never a good idea. And you know that already because all it does is create resistance in them. You get their back up and then they erupt. And then maybe you feel badly or you erupt. And now there's more mess than there was when you started. And it's not a good idea at all. So it's important for you to, to have a way to respond. So the next time you become aware and conscious of hearing, um, you should do this or you, you want that or uh, I think what's important to you is this. Just use that little catchphrase and say, oh, no, you're not me. You can't know that about me, but I'm willing to share what is so about me. Do you think that would be worth a try? I think for sure you would find that to be a useful exercise because we need these tools. First of all, we have to be awake to the fact that verbal abuse is more than just being put down or contained or not allowed to do things. It is actually having somebody who wants to tell you who you are and what's okay and what you think and what you feel and what you need and what you want and probably what you should have for breakfast too. <laughs> and that's abusive because it doesn't allow you to be you. This person doesn't want to be in relationship with who you really are. They want to be in relationship with the you that they can manage, control, and handle. So they want to tell you who they want you to be so that then you can please them. That's off, right? That's crooked thinking. There's no question about it that that's not a good idea. So I just wanted to bring these things to your attention because it's that thing when people come to see me and I have clients in many, many countries and they'll say, I don't know really what it is that's really got me feeling so badly. I can tell you what he or she says or what he or she does, but I don't quite get a grasp on it. Often it's the very thing I'm talking to you about. It is that that other person is trying to tell you who you need to be, how you need to be, or what you think. And once you understand that, you'll become a good listener for that happening. And then you can use what I've said tonight. You can then be aware and awake in the moment and say, Oh, you couldn't possibly know what I'm thinking or what I need. Because you're not me. You have to train the person to think differently. So this is why I'm saying it over and over to you. And then just fill them in. Don't make them wrong for doing it. Don't, uh, don't, they may, get, they may get upset, but don't you upset them on purpose. Just simply say, oh, no, you couldn't possibly know because you're not me. But if you're interested, I'll tell you what I want or what I think. And so I hope this has been helpful to you. And I hope that you'll come along if these things are happening in your life. I hope you'll come along and join my closed Facebook group. It has a very innocuous title. It's called Optimized Life, so it's easy to find. And the reason it has that title is because if you're with somebody who's abusive in any way, they often like to find out what you're up to on Facebook, so I didn't want to give it a name that would let them know. So go to Optimize Life, and that's the name of the group. It's closed. And what a closed group means on Facebook is that people can see who belong to the group but nobody but group members can see the conversation. And then if you want even more privacy, once you're in that group, you can ask me to add you to my secret group, which is called Optimizing Life Now. That's for people who really want to get on with it and make big changes in their life. And a secret group on Facebook means nobody knows you're in the group and nobody can see anything that anyone posts. So it's a great place to get new insights on all of this, to ask your very specific questions. And if you want to become a member at forrelationshiphelp.com, 
you can do that too. Our membership is there for you and you can have access to an entire video and question library that will give you information you just can't find easily anywhere. So tonight's topic, verbal abuse is more than you think. I hope it got you thinking and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Visit us now at Optimize Life, the Facebook group, or at my website forrelationshiphelp.com where you can download my free ebook, How to Spot a Hijackal. Talk soon.